Hello everyone and welcome to this video on the Python programming language and machine learning. So in this video we're going to create a program that predicts the price of Facebook stock for a specific day using the machine learning algorithm called support vector regression. Now currently I'm on Google's website called colab.research.google.com because it makes it easy to start programming in Python. So you don't have to install Python into your computer. You could just go to this website and log in using your Google account and get started writing your Python code. So to get started writing this Python code, you're going to want to click on File, and then click on New Notebook, and then a new tab will open up for you, and a new cell will open up for you. Now in this cell, I'm going to put in some comments. So I'm going to put in a description about the program. And again, this program predicts the price of Facebook stock for a specific day. Okay. Next, I'm going to create a new cell by clicking this code button in the top left. And in this cell, I'm going to import the libraries that I plan on using throughout this program. So from sklearn.svm, I'm going to import SVR. Next, I'm going to import NumPy as NP. And I'm going to import Pandas as PD. And last but not least, I'm going to import matplotlib.pyplot. And I'm going to do it as PLT. And then I'm going to give the plot a style. So just type plt.style.use. And I'm going to use the 538 style. And then I'm going to run this cell by clicking this button here to the left. And if there are no errors, then I won't get any error messages. OK, so I'm off to a good start. Let's go ahead and create a new cell. And in this cell, I'm going to load the data. All right, so from google.colab, I'm going to import files, and then I'm gonna create a variable called uploaded, and I'm gonna set it equal to files.upload, and let's go ahead and run this cell, and then we're gonna click on choose files, and then I'm gonna load that file there. So let's just open it. Okay, now that file's loaded, I'm gonna create a new cell, and I'm going to store the data. So, well, let's see, I'm going to store and let's do store and show the data. Okay, so I'm going to create a variable called df and set it equal to pd.read underscore csv. And I'm going to input the name of the file, which is capital F, capital B, underscore, capital S, T O C K dot csv. And then I want to show this data, so I'm just going to type df and let's go ahead and run this. Okay, and now I can see this data set. So it appears to have 22 rows of data and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven columns. So that's the date column, the open price column, high price column, low price column, the close price column, the adjusted close price column, and the volume column, all right? Now, if you don't want to, you know, basically count all the columns and rows, you can just uh, get that count by doing this. So here I'll show you, get the, get the number of rows and columns. So just type df.shape and then run this. And then it'll tell you that there's 22 rows in the data set and seven columns, okay? Now, the idea of this program is to basically train these, these machine learning models on basically all the data from index 20 to index zero. And we're gonna train it on the adjusted close price and then I'm going to give the models a day. So it'll be this last day here, day 31. And it's going to try and predict the value of the stock for that day. All right. Okay. So let's see. Let's print and get the last row of data. So I'm going to create a new cell here. And I'm going to get and print the last row of data because I don't want the models to train on that data and I want to verify that the model got it correct later on so let's go ahead and do that I'm gonna create a variable called actual underscore price and I'm gonna set it equal to df dot tail and we're gonna input the number one and then I want to print actual or show actual price all right so let's go ahead and run this and now we can see that I've stored that last row of data into actual price all right, so let's go ahead and create a new cell. And in this cell, I want to prepare the data for training 
the SVR models. Okay, and I put models here because I'm going to have three models. So let's go ahead and get started with that. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to get all of the data in the data set except for the last row. So just type df and set it equal to df dot dot head and I'm going to get all of the data minus that last row. So minus one. All right. And then I want to print the print the new data set. So I'm just going to type print and then put df here and let's run this. OK, so now we can see that this new data set has 21 rows as opposed to 22 rows like before and seven columns. And that last column is indeed gone, which was at index 21. OK, so that's good. Let's go ahead and create a new cell. And now let me think. Now I think I want to create empty list to store the independent and dependent data. So let me go ahead and put that here. Create empty list to store the the independent, independent, and dependent data. So I'm gonna create some variables. One I'll call days, and I'm gonna set it equal to an empty list, and the other will be adjusted close underscore prices. I'm gonna set that equal to an empty list as well. All right, and then I'm going to go ahead and run this. Perfect. Let's create a new cell. And now in this cell, I want to get the the date and the adjusted close price. And I really I should say close prices and dates, right? From the data set. So that means I'm going to need the data from the date column and I'm going to need data from the adjusted close price column. All right, so let's go ahead and create some variables. I'm going to put df or create df underscore days and set it equal to df dot lock. And I want all of the rows from the date column. And then I'm going to create another variable. I'm going to call it df underscore adjusted underscore close. And I'm going to set it equal to df dot lock. And I want all the rows from the adjusted close price column. So let's go ahead and run this. All right, let's create a new cell. And now in this cell, um, first I'm going to create the independent, independent data set. So for day in df underscore days, I'm going to append to the days list. So I'm going to type days dot append, and I want to append the day. Right now, the problem is that I have the date and I don't have the actual day, so I need to split that date column. So just type day dot split, and we're going to split on the slash, and then I want the day, which is at index one, and then I'm going to cast this to an int. Okay, and the the models are expecting an array here so I need to convert this to an array so just put these square brackets here and here and that should be good all right next I'm going to create the dependent data set and if I look up here it looks like I misspelled the or the so let me just correct that there all right so now going back to creating the dependent data set we're going to need a loop so for adjusted underscore close underscore price in df underscore adjusted underscore close I want to append to that adjusted underscore close prices list so I need to put dot append and I'm going to append the price so that's the adjusted the adjusted close price and I am going to cast this to a float okay so that should be it. Let's go ahead and run this. All right, no errors. Let's create a new cell. And now in this cell, I want to print the days and the adjusted close prices. 
So just type print and then days and then print and the adjusted close prices. And let's go ahead and run this after I make sure I've spelled print correctly. All right, so let's go ahead and run this. All right, and now we can see the two lists. So the top list is a list of the days and the bottom list is a list of the adjusted close prices. Okay, now what you may notice about the days is that they're not sequential, so we don't have like day four or five here, which you probably would expect between the three and the six, and that's because the market wasn't open then, and therefore the data wasn't recorded. All right, so these days, you know, won't be sequential, just when the prices were recorded. All right, so let's go ahead and create a new cell. And now in this cell, we can create the three support vector regression models. So here I will put create the three support, and I'm gonna put this all in caps, support re or sorry, support vector regression models. All right, so that looks good. So I'm gonna start off by creating a support vector regression model with the linear kernel. So here I'm going to put create and train, actually I'm going to create and train a support vector regression model using a linear kernel. All right, so I'm going to create a variable called lin underscore SVR and I'm going to set it equal to SVR and I'm going to give it a kernel. So the kernel will be linear and then the C value will be equal to 1000.0. And then I'm going to train this model. So just type lin underscore SVR dot fit. And I'm going to train it on days and the adjusted close prices. All right. Now the other two models will be very similar. So I'm just going to highlight this, copy it using control C and then paste it twice and just change a few things. So the next model will be the polynomial model. So I'm going to put here polynomial and really it's an SVR model with a polynomial kernel. So let's see here. I'm going to change this name here from Lin to poly and the kernel will be poly and it also needs a degree. So I'm going to set the degree equal to two. And again, I need to change this here to poly because we're going to train that model on the days and the adjusted close prices. All right. So we're done with that. Now the last model, we'll be using a RBF kernel. So I'm going to put RBF here. And instead of lin here, I'm going to call it RBF. And then I'm going to change this to RBF. And the C value is fine, but this is expecting a gamma. So I'm going to set gamma equal to 0 0.15. And let's go ahead and put RBF here. And that should do it. So let's go ahead and run this. All right. So that ran just fine. So I'm going to create a new cell. Now in this cell, I'm going to plot the models on a graph to see which has the best fit to the original data. All right. So just type plt.figure and we give the figure a figure size. So it will be 16 by 8. And then type plt.scatter. And we're going to input days and the adjusted close prices. And we're going to give it a color. So I'm going to set the color equal to red. And we're going to give it a label. So the label will be data. So this is the original data. Next, I'm going to plot the model. So just type plt.plot. And this is actually one of the models, right? So we're going to input days. And then we're going to input... Um, I'll start off with the RBF model, so just do RBF underscore SVR dot predict. And we're going to predict on the days. And then I'm going to give this model a color, so the color will be green. And the label will be RBF model. And because the other two are similar, I'm just going to highlight it and copy it using Control C and then paste it two more times. And then it's going to change a few things. So instead of RBF here, I will do the polynomial model. And I'll make this orange. 
and I'm going to change RBF here to poly, no mill. Okay. And then this last one here will be the linear model. So I'm going to change that to lin, and the color will be blue, and I will make this linear model. Okay. Next, we need to create the legend. So just type plt.legend. And then I want to show the plot. So type plt.show. And let's go ahead and run this. All right. And this is the graph. So we can see the data points in red. So it's these red dots here. That's the actual value of the stock for that given day. So here are the, are the stock's value in USD. And on the x-axis is the, the, the day uh, for that stock. So for example, on day uh, five, or actually, uh, let's see a good point here. On day 10, it looks like the stock was somewhere between 188 and 190 uh, USD. Okay. All right. So the model that seems to fit the data the best is the RBF model in green. So you can see it basically hitting all the points. And then the other two models don't seem to be doing such a good job. But you know, this just from looking at the graph and this can be very misleading. So let's go ahead and create a new cell. And in this cell, I want to show the predicted price for the given day. Because remember, the whole point of this is to see if it can, if this model can predict the, the 31st day, that day that was on the last row of the data. So I'm gonna create a variable called day and set it equal to 31. So let's see how good our models are and which one's the best model for this prediction. So I'm going to print the RBF SVR predicted and I'll put a colon there and then comma RBF underscore SVR dot predict and I want to predict on that day. And the other two models will be very similar. So I'm just going to copy that and paste this twice. And then I'm going to use the linear model here. So just put linear and put lin here. And then the last one will be polynomial. And so I'm just going to change this here to poly. And let's go ahead and run this. Okay. So now we get back these three prices from our three models. And the one that actually seems to be closest to the actual price for day 31 is the polynomial SVR. Okay, so let's go ahead and create a new cell and let's just verify uh, that my statement is true. So I'm going to print the actual price of the stock on day 31. So print the actual price and I'm going to put actual underscore price and I want the adjusted close price column and then I want the row at index 21. All right, let's go ahead and run this. Okay, and now I can see that the actual price was 177.470001 uh, USD and so that means that the model that actually was the closest to predicting this value was the polynomial SVR. All right. So as you can see, this model is definitely not perfect. Um, you probably will not become rich from using this model, but I think this is a, a good learning point and a good start on learning more about machine learning in general and doing some pretty cool and fun projects with machine learning. So, uh, you know, if you want to, definitely feel free to to improve upon this model. So anyways, that's basically it. Thank you for watching. Please leave any questions you have in the comment section. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and that like button. And if you enjoyed the video, please share it. And as always, thank you for watching and I'll see you all in the next video.